Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. I've been talking a lot recently about exceptions and the result pattern, especially in .NET, when to use them, when to not use them, trying to maintain a really balanced approach because I really think that there is no silver bullet. And either way, if we exaggerate on one side or the other, that's not really productive. And I think that there is a time and place for exceptions in our applications. But in this video, I want to show you my approach and my implementation to the result pattern because I use it a lot in the applications that I've built. And I think that it makes sense in a lot of different scenarios to use this specific pattern. However, you should definitely watch this video carefully and do not skip because I think more important than the code that we'll write together is the thought process that I have actually to arrive to the code that I write, which as you will see, is nothing really fancy or complicated. One of the questions that I very often get when it comes to discussions about this result pattern is if I prefer to use a library for this or not. And there are indeed plenty of libraries out there for implementing or that implement the result pattern. We have, for instance, this light results, which is a very popular library that promotes this result pattern. We have also these front results, very popular as well, that also implements or gives us some mechanisms to work with a result object. And it has really a lot of different functionality. So if you look to the documentations of all these libraries, you'll see there's really a lot in there. And there's also this error or library, which is very popular. And by the way, this library is developed by Amihai, which is also a .NET YouTuber. So I strongly encourage you to go to his channel and also subscribe to him and take a look at his videos because he is doing really great stuff there. So should I use a library to implement the result? My take on this is that I try to avoid using library for the result pattern. You have to understand that whenever you add a library to your code base, you actually add technical depth. Yes, you heard it right. Whenever you add a library to your application, you add technical depth. It's a technical depth. It's a depth that at a certain point, most probably will need to be paid off. Now, this is not something inherently bad because as in real life, we might actually need to go into some debt at some point. However, there are things to consider because it is one thing to, for instance, I don't know, go into debt or take a loan to open a new business or maybe to buy a house. And it is a totally other thing to go into debt to buy the new iPhone or to buy a new BMW. Because at least in Romania, people, they go really into debt to buy iPhones and BMWs, which I think, well, it doesn't really make sense. And it's the same for coding. Like, okay, if you need to do some stuff that's really hard to implement, like image processing, obviously I wouldn't then try to create my own image processing library. I would go and use image sharp for that, but obviously I would also make sure that I pay for that. Even if I don't make six figures out of it, it's normal and it's okay if you make something out of, of that library to actually give something back and contribute and sponsor that specific library. However, when it comes to the result pattern, it's actually very, very simple. So we just need very simple functionality. Is it really a good idea to go into technical depth for a functionality that you can implement virtually in five minutes, no more than that. From my point of view, this is not a great option and therefore I always prefer to use my own result implementation. Cool, so now we can go on and implement the result pattern in this very basic application. But before we do that, and that's the thought process that I always have, is I always ask myself, what do I really need from this functionality? And from my point of view, in most of the applications that I write, I need just a very few things. First of all, I need an error type that's custom to my own application, to my own needs, and where I can add a lot of metadata about what's happening when generating that specific error. The second thing that, that I need is a result type or a result class that is not instantiatable from outside the class itself. So I don't want to give the opportunity to the consumers of that class to create new instances of it. I just want to expose some functionality that would instantiate appropriate results. And the third thing that I need from such a library is an easy way to map the result to something so that I can avoid having, I don't know, different if statements just to process the results. So now let's move on and see how we could implement that. We have here a very basic application that mimics 
the transactions or the things or the actions that you can perform when you are at an ATM, for instance. And the first thing that you would need to do there is probably to, well, I just want to, well, enter my PIN so that I can either withdraw or do something from that uh, or with that uh, ATM. And we can assume that, okay, for that we have something like an authenticate because entering the PIN is just checking if the PIN matches. So we can think about this as being sort of an authentication. So I have here this handler which is responsible to authenticate. And what it does is obviously it's just using an account repository and gets an account by account number. And then it simply verifies if the PIN of the account matches to the PIN that was inserted by the user then everything's okay and we return the account. But if the pins don't match, well, in this case, here we throw an argument exception and we say that it's an invalid pin. Now, from my point of view, this is a scenario where it is not justifiable to throw an exception because it's something that we can expect in the regular flow of the business rules of this application that the user might, for instance, make a typo. So the pin might be wrong on the first try. So it's not something exceptional, it's something that definitely might happen in our application and we, well, need the different mechanisms or we, we will need different mechanisms to actually guard against that, but not throwing exceptions because it's nothing exceptional in that. It's something that definitely can and will happen in the application. So that's a candidate from my point of view where we could implement the result pattern. So let's now go on and see how we would do that or how I would approach that. So first of all, I would like to create here a new class and I will call this class simply error because first I just want to define the error object. This error object can be something very simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. You can even start out with something like that with a very simple constructor, a string message. And usually what I like to have is an error code and we can have that as string. You can even have that as enum or you can, well, implement whatever type of coding your errors you might want or find useful in your application. So there's really nothing to say here. That's that's a best practice. Now, the idea is that you can definitely extend this error class with a lot of metadata about, OK, what has happened until this error was generated. So for each thing that is important for you in your application, you can just add here, for instance, a property and make sure that you capture in your error object as much information as possible. For now, for the sake of simplicity in this demo, we'll just keep it very simple and we'll have only this message and this code. Now that we have our error type, we can now move over and implement our result type. So let's go on and add here a new class and we'll just call this class result and that would be our class. Now there are some things that we need to do here. First of all, it needs to be a generic class because the T is basically the, the placeholder or the type of the object that will place if the call or if the processing was successful. On this class, what we'll need is some very basic three properties. First of all, a property of type T that might be nullable in case if it is an error. We need also a property which is of type error, which might also be nullable, obviously, in case, well, it's a successful result. And then maybe a bool that verifies if it is success or not. Now, I want to emphasize again, one of the most important things from my point of view when implementing the result pattern is that consumers of this class shouldn't be able to create new instances of the class by themselves. The creation of new instances should be kind of like expose this functionality in the class itself. Therefore, what I will have here is two constructors, but both of them are private. Now, one of the constructor takes in the T in case if, well, the processing was successful and we want to return a successful result, or we could have another constructor that takes in an error for the case that this result should represent an error. That's mostly everything that we need. The only one thing that we need to add is the functional functionality that gives the consumers the ability to create new instances. So in a way that we can fully control that. So therefore I would have, let's call them even factory methods like the public started result of T and I will have one that I will call success. And this would create a new result using the constructor that takes in the T and a result failure that takes in an error and that would return a result that would actually be an error. And the last thing that I mentioned I want to have in my result object is simply a method or, well, a way 
through which I can easily in the consumers or in different consumers check if this or if, if that specific instance of the result is an error or not. And to do this, we can kind of like take a little bit of inspiration from functional programming and from other languages where we have the map method. So here we will have a T result that will return a certain result that we specify when we use the map method. And we'll see just in a few minutes exactly how we can use that. That would take in, well, two very simple funks in as parameters. First of, uh, first of all, a funk of t that would return the result and that would represent the success path or the case if this result is successful. And another funk in this case of error and a t result that would represent obviously the use case or the case when that specific instance actually is an error instance. And then simply we just return this is if it is success, then we execute this funk. And if it is not success, then well, we execute the on failure delegate. And that's basically it. So there's nothing more to it than this. Now we can go back to our authenticate handler and we can change some stuff here. Before we return the result, we actually need to make some modifications here in this idea of request and request handler. Now, first of all, the I request will not return an account, but it will return a result of type account instead. Now, obviously now, since we have changed this, we also need to change some things in the request handler. And this request handler takes in, or is the handler for the authenticate I request, but it needs to also return a result of account instead of this. And now the interface is not implemented properly because here, once again, we just return this account. So we need to also change here to have a result of account as a return type for this handle method. And now everything's okay. Obviously now we have this exception or this error here because right now we are just returning a task of account, which is not okay anymore according to the signature. So what we can do instead here is, well, maybe say if account uh, dot pin is not equals to the request dot pin, we don't throw an error, but we simply return this result dot failure. And here in this failure, we can just instantiate a new error. In the constructor of the error, we just need to provide the message and the error code. So let's say the error message is invalid pin and the code for this error is an invalid pin error. There are a few things that are still missing here. First of all, we need the generic type parameter. And here, well, we need to return a task. And therefore, we can also say here, simplify things and say from result. And we just return the result of account. And we just need a new parenthesis here. And we should be good to go. So now we have returned this failure. Now, if the two pins match, then we can return a success. So we can have a task from result. And well, what we will return here is result of account and success because it's a success in this case. And we just place the account in the success and it should return whatever it needs. And voila, this is how we implemented the result better. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is how do we use this result and the map method in a controller where we actually might get a response or well, might get a result back from this handler. So let's go here to this accounts controller where I have implemented this very basic try catch because remember previously uh, this method or well, the handler was throwing an exception. So we just returned the account mediator dot send and if it was okay, if, uh, if everything went smooth, we just returned the account. Otherwise we just returned a bad request with the message. So let's try to see how we could do that based on the result. Now, first of all, what we have here, we can take this out of the try block because we kind of like don't really need it anymore. We just need to get this and we can get rid of this entire try catch construct. And instead, what we can simply do is say account this result. This is the result and the result we have the map method. Now in the map, remember it is a generic one. So we say that we will return an I action result. And then we need to provide simply two funks, two delegates that need to be executed in these two cases. Like if this success, I want to execute OK and I will return this account. Theoretically, I shouldn't even kind of like specify the account here because it will pass it automatically, but I want to keep it very explicitly. And in case if it is a failure, then we just will return a bad request. 
And I think by implementing this very simple change, my controller already looks a little bit better because it doesn't really have that entire try and catch construct. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, usually in most of the applications, you really don't need more than that. You don't need all the functionalities that you have in all those libraries. Like you, you've seen, there are literally pages of documentation of functionalities. In most of the application, you will not need them all. This is the very basic thing that you might probably need in your application. And if you need to extend it somehow, you can just add some new properties or some methods. But usually in most of the applications that I have worked with, the result type and the error type were not that complex because there are really, really in most applications very common uh, things that, that you want to accomplish and a very basic setup usually does the job pretty well. So keep things simple, keep things very pragmatic. If you want to get access to the source code of this video, feel free to join the Code Wrinkles channel as a member on Ambassador Tire or Hire because all Ambassador members after each upload receive instructions on how they can download the source code of that specific video or live stream. If you enjoyed this video and you think it might be useful for others, don't be shy and hit the thumbs up button. Let others know that you watched this video and that you actually found it useful. Maybe share it with them and probably they will be thankful to you. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash it and also the notification bell so that you can get always notified whenever there is something new on this channel. And we try to do really a lot of cool stuff here. If you have any question or just want to get in touch with me, once again, don't be shy and head over to the comment section below and leave a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.